Hey y'all, my name's Tyson, and this week we're gonna talk about templates. Not just any templates, your very own custom templates. If you've opened SketchUp, then you had to pick a template to use as your default template, and it would set things like the size, um, mostly, you know, whether you're using metric or imperial and, and maybe a different style. And that might be as far as you think you can go with templates, but in fact, you can push them so much further. That's what we're going to do is explore some of the deeper level of what you can do by creating your own templates. So let's have a look. Okay. When you want to access templates, like I say, you will have a default template from when you started SketchUp, but if you say new from template, you can pick a different starting template. And this is where, if you give any of these this, uh, little heart, that's gonna be your default from then on. Here's where if you created your own templates, you can say instead, I want that to be my new default and I'm gonna start with any of these. So now this is my default template. When you create a template, here's a few of the settings that you might consider changing. One, your depth of field. I'm sorry, not your depth of field, your field of view. The default is 35. Personally, I like a bit wider, so I'll change that to 45 or 50 degrees. Also, go into the settings from your model info. And you know what? I'm going to turn off scene transitions. I usually want those off unless I'm specifically creating an animation. And if I go down through here, I probably have a number of these that I might change. If I have a default geolocation I use a lot, um, or maybe I want to, instead of, uh, what have I got here, Tahoma? No, clearly I want Papyrus as my default font. All right, open sans. <laughs> Let's not get too crazy. And that could be, from then on, I'm gonna have now open sans as my default text here. So go through here, like I say, units, the actual measurements is one of the things people think of uh, when they pick a default template, but go ahead and change that. Change your precision based on, are you getting very precise or do you wanna keep it less? Anything you change in here can be saved in your template. So that all looks good to me. And I could go ahead and say file, save as template. And I could set it as the new default template. So. That's my new default. Now, we can go farther than that. So let me open up two examples to show what are some of the other things we can save with templates. So if I come in here and say, this file, let's say, so I've got this simple table and I've got a, uh, a scale figure, I don't have anything else. Now let's say this was a makerspace at my local library and they have access to a number of different machines, some 3D printers, some laser cutters of all different models. Well, I could create a space for all of those and basically just have them in my model, but I don't have to because if I had created them as components, as long as I did not purge my component library, I have them all here. So I could come in and say, well, what's the size of their Prusa? What's the size of their Prusa extra large? And I could simply bring them in and my, my template can remember all of the stuff that's just sitting there in my component library without even being in my model space. Now, another thing that I've set up here is this size guide on and size guide off. Well, what is that doing for us? Let's have a look at the tags. I've got two tags in here. The, the default one, 
untagged, and then this platform guide. Well, when you have components here, they don't necessarily have tags assigned to them because different com uh, this component could be assigned to two different tags if I made copies of it. But by having this already set up, I could select all these, go into my entity info, and move them to the guide tag. And now this is already set up, so I can turn those on or off by just moving them into that tag. Because I had set these up, these scenes up, to control this platform guide on and off. Now that deals with scenes. So if you're not sure how to do that, have a look at some videos on how to control tags via creating scenes. But it's one of the things that you could do by saying, you know what, in my template, I'm not gonna have any of the geometry in my scene, but it is sitting in my component library. And then I can do the same as I've done before. Let's see, for my field of view, I'm gonna change that to 50 change this view a little bit, come up, make sure that things like, like I said, my animation settings are what they what I want them to be. You know one more that I want to check? Let me come over to components and I'm sorry, under scenes. Right under here, you've seen thumbnails. I I usually don't want that on, so I'm going to turn that off. And then I'll go and save this as a template. And this is my makerspace template. I'm not going to set it as my default, but I can choose it whenever I want to. Just by going file, new from template, my templates, and you can see my default is still the one that's hearted here, but makerspace, I can simply click on that. Let's look at one more example of pushing this even a little further. So if we say here, in this one, I only have uh, a scale figure as a component, but under tags, I've gone ahead and set up uh, floor one, furniture, section plane. So if I was using this as sort of my default starter, template for designing a new house or building or whatever kind of project it is, I can set this up. And I've also set it up so that I have the north and the south elevation. And look, I have that thing I talked about before. I want to turn my transitions off. West floor plan. You can see the floor plan and the roof plan haven't activated a section. There is a section in here where if I look at section planes, it's just cutting through the model in general, not necessarily through this group, just the whole model. But I've got that section plane hidden, but I can still control that section plane in the scenes, and that's what we've done here. And then let's say working view. So now anytime I want to start a new file, I can open this template, get rid of this house, and let's say I've got I'm just going to copy this file into the template that we created. And now that I've got this new house, it's already set up. North, south, elevations, floor plan, roof plan. And all of this could be connected to a layout file, which is a, something that um, a lot of our advanced uh, people out there who use SketchUp do, is they have these templates just set up so that they connect to their layout. And you get a lot of... Uh, you, your accelerated workflow right away. So that's some of the stuff you can do with templates. Oh yeah, I copied this in and I got a whole bunch of new layers. Or, I'm sorry, tags. But that's the idea. And, uh, you know,
go create some templates. So uh, there's kind of anything you set in SketchUp, any setting that's available, you can set it. And then when you save as a template, it's gonna save any geometry you have in the file. It's gonna save any scenes, any tags, any style settings, anything. It's all there and it's really powerful because you can just jumpstart your process uh, by creating some templates that again, either are just for working in SketchUp or templates that connect to layout. And then in layout, you can just point layout to the new file that you derive from whatever template you use. So really helpful. Get in there, customize your own templates for your use. It's one of those ways that you can just make SketchUp yours. Hopefully this was helpful. Let us know what you think. Let us know if you have other ideas or how you might use said templates. And let us know what else you would like to see in these skill builders because we want to make them useful for you. Thanks. And as always, give us a like, give us a subscribe, and we will see you next time.